deadly storm described by officials as a once in a century weather event. As landslides reshape the geography here. But also, uh, we'll be there for the cleanup and the rebuilding after uh, the impacts of these extreme weather events. Okay, gather your family because you can experience a historic event just by looking into the night sky this week. It's 15 now. This next story sounds like a horror movie, but it's actually real. And one of the most read stories on the BBC News website this morning comes from Egypt. The news may sound like the story of a biblical plague, but it has a modern explanation. Climate change. The rains in Aswan have been the heaviest in seven years. Heavy thunderstorms unleash flooding, mudslides, and scorpions. This is in Egypt. Listen to this. 453 people were stung and three oh people gosh. died. 500 people getting stung by scorpions. This happened in Aswan, the largest city in southern Egypt. Egyptians are drawing all sorts of parallels. They're comparing it with biblical plagues. Last week, the city was hit by a fierce storm. There was heavy rain, thunder, and flash floods. It sent the people of Aswan scurrying for dry land from their mud brick houses. Awaiting them at home were some deadly guests. Hundreds if not thousands of fat-tailed scorpions with their tails full of toxic venom. They'd been swept from their desert burrows by the rains. They burst into homes through cracks in the walls. But 503 bites in one night is unheard of. That too on a day of incessant pouring. Egypt is a mysterious place. And no, the puzzling pyramids of Giza are not the only reason. What makes Egypt mysterious are also stories like these. A rare sight in the sky tonight, the longest partial lunar eclipse in nearly 600 years. Georgians will be treated to the longest partial lunar eclipse we've seen in about 600 years. If you would like to witness a show in the sky, yeah, it's been hundreds of years since a partial lunar eclipse has lasted as long as this one is scheduled to go. It'll be visible late tonight into tomorrow morning. It's expected to last uh, three and a half hours. It'll be almost a total eclipse. NASA says it will cover more than 97% of the moon. Mm. It's very sciencey and interesting if you're, if you're into it. What makes this eclipse so special is it's the longest partial eclipse since the year 1440. But if you're after something a little bit cold, let me quickly take you to Anchorage out there in Alaska in the northwest United States, coming to the end of their Thursday at the moment. Look at the scenes they've had here. Record breaking snowfall for one day. Some parts of uh, the uh, city in Anchorage saw around 17 inches of snowfall in the space of one day. As sea ice melts and global oceans warm, sea levels are rising, presenting grave threats to small, low-lying island nations and to coastal areas here in the U.S. One example is in the Gulf of Maine. The ocean waters that stretch from Massachusetts to Nova Scotia are one of the fastest warming bodies of salt water on Earth. An atmospheric river event affecting parts of Washington State, Oregon, and British Columbia, Canada. This deadly and devastating deluge delivering an unrelenting blow to the Pacific Northwest. A quadruple catastrophe. Record rain, fierce flooding, whipping winds, and multiple mudslides. A storm with winds so strong blowing over this 18-wheeler. The tractor trailer left leaning over a guardrail. In Bellingham, Washington, heavy rains wreaking havoc, submerging cars and gas stations underwater. Six inches of rain. In just hours, six inches of rain swamped the region, a state of emergency amid these deadly conditions. This one, so far, in 31 days, the Pacific Northwest, 40 inches of rain, the wettest days for parts of Canada, and Seattle has had its wettest fall on record. One disaster now followed by another for a region still deep in misery. And Miguel, we know a lot of folks still without power. And adding insult to the misery, 90% of the West tonight remains in extreme drought. This is one of the very few areas that doesn't need more water. This is a special 30-minute newscast on the day B.C. was battered by an unprecedented storm and we were not immune at CTV. As floodwaters devastate the province. The entire city of Merritt, B.C. has been forced to evacuate due to the floods. 
An intense fall storm transforming the road into a river. The weekend's 100-year storm causing extraordinary damage to the vital island connection. It could end up being one of Canada's most expensive disasters. Mudslides have destroyed highways and bridges, cutting off access to the largest port in Vancouver. And floodwaters are still rising. We uh, were initially planning for a 1 in 200 year flood when this started coming through and then all of a sudden that blew through those projections in just a matter of hours. Record rains devastated major highways. One by one, they were all closed. There's not a person that hasn't been affected or will not be affected by the events of this past weekend. These events are increasing in regularity. This one is being called an atmospheric river, which dumped a month's worth of rain in two days. After a summer of wildfires and record high temperatures has come this. More rain in a day than people here are used to in a month. Several creeks burst their banks, washing out roads and flooding property. Across the border in Washington state, torrential rains and high winds have also been wreaking havoc, flooding roads. I mean, this summer has just taught us here in Canada, but I think people around the world, that you don't have to go anywhere. Climate change is affecting everyone at home. Of the climate emergency in Canada. Canada is warming, on average, twice as quickly as the rest of the world. And in our north, it's three times quicker. The science is clear. We must do more and faster. 